just to stare into my mind and, and my thoughts and my emotions all day long with no distractions, no TV, no phones, very little food, and just doing that. And then we did this for three days. On the second day of the retreat, I mean, my legs were shaking. I, could, I couldn't even sit properly. I mean, my legs were bent upwards and I was shaking. My eyes and my back was hurting. And all of a sudden, you know, after hours of boredom and just staring at this opaque nothingness and the breath and watching the breath and doing this technique called insight meditation, all of a sudden, you know, in my belly, you know, right down in here, there was this just cracking explosion of ecstasy. I mean, it was so bright. It happened so fast and I just started bursting out laughing hysterically. And I would, I would fight and try to stop, you know, laughing because there were all these people in the meditation room. And pretty soon I started laughing so hard I just had to leave. I had to get up and go outside. And when I walked outside, it was like I, I didn't even have a body anymore. I mean, I had the arms and the legs and I could walk, but I was in this ethereal space. And I remember walking through this grassy field in the park in Vancouver, Canada. And I came upon these three weeping willow trees with blowing in the wind. And when the wind blew through the trees, I was the tree. I was the wind caressing the tree. I could feel it. Just like I can feel my face and my eyes and my skin. I could actually feel it. I was in this extended consciousness. And not only that, there was this supernatural ecstasy bathing the trees. And it just seemed to get deeper and deeper and deeper. I got so lost in these trees. And I remember these birds, these crows walking on the grass and it tickled me when they walked on the grass because they were walking on me. It's like I was that connected to the whole. And all of a sudden that this, this vast consciousness, this beautiful, peaceful ecstasy, it was not like a, an exhilarating kind of a high. It was, it was this smooth ecstasy. All of a sudden I could hear what the Hindus call the sound of Om, the all-pervading sound of the universe. I could hear every plant, every tree, every blade of grass, every unique plant had its own sound. And the sound was very silent but very obvious in this consciousness. And it would, all the sounds of all living things were blending into this symphony of the sound of Om. And I looked up, I remember looking up and looking up at the sun and I was just in awe. I was like, oh my God, I can hear the sun. The sun was making this very high pitch frequency sound combined with a very low frequency sound together. And it was also in the symphony of Ohm and, and the sound of everything was merging. And, and I walked and it just felt like I was I was made of pure consciousness. I was no longer the body. In the 6th century BC, Pythagoras taught that a harmonic sound was produced from the motion of the celestial bodies. The sun, the planets, and the stars in the heavens were producing a sort of cosmic music as they pulse from within and travel along the vibrating strings of their orbits.
Pythagoras actually experienced going beyond his physical boundaries with his consciousness and hearing what is now called the music of the spheres. He believed anyone who purified their senses could have this experience. Quote, Such a one will perceive things invisible to others and will hear things inaudible by others. With this enlightenment and wisdom, Pythagoras gave birth to classical music and the intervallic system we use to write music today. He saw three phases of music, the musica humana, the music of the human being as the human instrument, the music instrumentalis, the music of the voice and musical instruments, and the musica mundana, the music of the cosmos. The human musical body and mind is an instrument which if tuned and purified could expand its awareness into the world and cosmic beyond. I thought I thought I was seeing I thought I was seeing my scuba diving bubbles. I thought I was seeing from 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 the my from the mask and from the tank, I thought I was seeing the bubbles, and they were beautiful. They were um, soap bubbles, like, and I was moving with these incredible bubbles, moving so fast, and and as I was moving with these bubbles, I kept thinking, well, somebody's saving me. There's, I'm being saved, and I move with these bubbles. And I could see in front of me, I could see behind me, I could see on top of me, um, left of me and the right of me. And all of a sudden I realized I couldn't see my body. I couldn't see my body. There was no body. I was, I was a bubble. I must have been a bubble. I was a spirit. I was moving with these bubbles and I was a light. And these lights were um, like diamonds, all sides. They were a kaleidoscope of colors, of beautiful soapy bubbles. And as we moved, as the speed quieted down, almost Tai Chi slowed down. Time stopped. It slowed down to, and there was no beginning and there was no end. I was in the now, and the now had a voice. The, the now had energy. The now was orgasmic in quality. It was brilliantly, orgasmically gorgeous, exploding. Voices of beauty, of grace, of, of love. Billions and billions of voices, and it sang, and I was singing. I was vibrating in this energy. I was vibrating. And I was singing my song. I was singing all the things that I had experienced in body that were beautiful. And I, as, as the energy passed through me and vibrated from me, like a tuning fork, I was singing my melody. And the melody was part of heaven's melody and part of heaven's light. Asking what it feels like when I sing is actually it's actually the, the one question that doesn't mean anything. Because 
The whole point of chanting, and I guess spiritual practice in general, is to engage yourself completely in the practice. There's no one there to be evaluating or thinking about it or saying, wow, this is really good or this is bad or I should try harder. And like that. You reach a certain point where you're given 100%. And at that point, there's nobody left. There's no part of you left to be noticing how it feels at the time. Well, if we are exclusively content in ourselves, that is total life, total value of your life. Your body and mind is yourself. But if you really achieve anatta, if you really see yourself outside of your body, you are released from this clumsy body and mind. That is a real achievement. The human aura is our very own glowing, living energy field that extends beyond our physical boundaries. While invisible to most humans, it is the light extension of our soul. In rare cases of enlightened individuals such as Krishna and Radha, Buddha, Kuan Yin, Jesus, Mary and other enlightened beings or saints, it was said that you could actually see a huge luminous sphere, nimbus or halo expanding beyond their head region. People were so affected by the divine presence of these masters that when coming in contact with their aura, enlightenment was transmitted through it as they felt the presence of God. What about ordinary human beings? Do we have our own halo or aura?